In this exercise, we'll continue our styling of Bullseye by modifying all of the buttons in the app to use custom images, and by modifying the slider in the app to have a custom thumb image and custom images for each of the slider tracks. Let's get started. Let's begin by styling this button. We want it to use a custom image instead of just a plain looking button like this. So first of all, I want to go to the size inspector and change the size of this button to be a little bit bigger. So I'll click this tab over here, and for the width, I'll enter in 100, and for the height, I'll enter in 37. And I'm going to move this button so it matches right in the center of this bullseye, because after all, that's the name of the app. Next, I want to go to the Attributes Inspector, which is the fourth tab, and change the type of the button from System to Custom. So a System button just has a label and no border, and by making it a Custom button, we can make it any style that we want. By going down to this background right here, I can put a background image for the button. And I've already added one into the app earlier in the two videos ago, so I'll choose the button normal image that I added. And look, hey, the button's looking a lot nicer already. Of course, the font doesn't look quite right on here, so we need to change the font as well. So I'll change here the font, and I'll change it to Arial MT Bold. So again, by doing that, we click Custom, go up to Arial MT Bold, and we'll set the size up to 20. We also have to change the text color. So we're going to change the color here to 96 red, 30 green, 0 blue, and 100 opacity. And this is kind of a dark brown color that matches this background image right here. We're also going to set up the shadow color, and it's going to be pure white. So 255, 255, 255. And the opacity is going to be 50%. And for the height here, we're going to put width of 0, height of 1, just to make it pop out a little bit. Buttons in iOS can have more than one state. You can see this by clicking the state config drop down, and there's different ones. Hi default, which is where we are now, highlighted, which is what happens when the user taps down on a button, and it currently looks a little bit different to show you're pressing down on it. Then there's selected, which is something you can set programmatically, and there's also disabled, which you can also set programmatically to indicate that a button uh, is not selectable. In this case, we want to highlight it because we want the button to look a little bit different if the user taps down on it. And we actually have a different background image for that, so I'm going to pick pick button highlighted right here. Now to see what it would look like in Interface Builder, you can actually click these states right here just to show what it looks like. And if I toggle that, you can see that it changes the background image to the new image that I set up. Now I gotta change a couple other things too. So the text color, it actually looks like it's already set up to the right brown color, so I'm okay there. But I need to redo the shadow color here, which again, I want to be white at 50% uh, opacity and um, zero 01 looks right there too. Another thing I want to do is click on the reverses on highlight button. This will give the appearance of the label being pressed down when the user taps the button. All right, so I'm going to switch this back to uh, not show the highlighted state here. And I'm going to go to the top and switch this back to the default state just so I uh, don't forget that I'm in that state. All right, so now we're going to style the start over button and it's going to be a very similar setup. First of all, we'll change this over to system. This time we're not actually going to have any text on the button, so I'm going to delete the start over placeholder text right here. Then this time I'm going for the image to choose the start over image that I've already added into this project. I also want to set the background image for the button to be small button. The difference is the image is on top of whatever the background is. Now I need to make sure the width and the height is okay. I want to have 32 for both the width and the height of this button. In this case, we're not going to set a highlighted state on the button. We'll let UIKit have a default appearance for this. Now we'll make the same changes for the I button. I'll select that, change it to be custom, change the image to be info button, change the background image to be small button. And I'll go to the size inspector and set the width to 32 and the height to 32. Okay, our user interface is looking really good. There's only one thing left and that's the slider. And that leads me to a quick discussion. Unfortunately, you can only customize the slider a little bit in Xcode. For the more advanced customization that we want to do in Bullseye, such as changing the thumb image or the slider track images, we have to resort to writing Swift code. Now, it turns out that everything you do in your app and interface builder could also be done via code. We could have programmed the entire Bullseye app all in code, and in fact, some programmers prefer to work that way. But personally, I enjoy working with interface builder. It's so easy to use, you can visually see what you're doing, and I, as mentioned earlier, less lines of code means less bugs. 
But in this particular case, we have to work in code. We have no choice. So let's try it out. Okay, so let's customize the look of this slider in code. I'll open up viewcontroller.swift and go to view did load. I'm gonna type let thumb image normal equals UI image. And I'll keep hitting down until I find the one that says named. And I'll type in the name of the image from the asset catalog, which is slider thumb normal. So we've created an image that we can now reference in code. And so we have a reference to the slider that we've already connected to an outlet. And there's a method on slider called set thumb image. And you pass in the image. So I can just paste in that value there. And four is the control state that you want to set this for. Remember, there's different states. There's normal, highlighted, selected, and disabled. So we want normal, which we can just do dot normal here. Now, we actually want to have a different image for the thumbnail um, when it's highlighted as well. So I'm going to copy these lines of code just to save a little bit of typing. And so we want thumb image highlighted. And the name of this one is slider thumb highlighted. And so we again call set thumb image, but now it's a different state. We use dot highlighted instead. So when setting up the slider track image, you actually need two parts. You need to have whatever shows to the left of the thumb, which we're going to have green, and whatever shows to the right of the thumb, which we're going to have gray. And the way you set up these images is actually kind of cool. You can create what's called resizable images. So you actually are able to specify, well, actually, this part of the image I want to always be there. And then this middle part of the image I want you to just repeat as long as however that image needs to be. And this part I want to always be there. And you set this up by creating a value called insets, where you say, okay, 14 from the left should always be there, and then 14 from the right should always be there. So let's give that a try. We're gonna create a value here called insets, equals UI edge insets. And you specify how far from the top do you wanna always uh, keep. Well, we can just stretch that, so zero. From the left, 14, we wanna always stay. From bottom, zero, and from right, 14. Okay, so now we need to load the left track image. So track image left equals UI image named slider track left. Now we need to convert that image from a normal image to a resizable image. So we'll say let track left resizable equals, and then track left image, I have a typo here, dot resizable image with cap insets. And we'll just pass in the insets that we created earlier. Now that we have a resizable image, we just need to set the slider to use it. So the slider has a method called set minimum track image. And you just pass in the name of the image, which is track left resizable. And for the control state, we want here normal. And now we want to repeat the same exact idea for the right track image. So we'll just say track right image equals slider track right. And we'll say track right resizable equals track right image, resizable image. And finally, we'll set, instead of set minimum track image, set maximum track image. And then that's track re right resizable. All right, that's it. Now let's build and run and see what this looks like. Hey, it's looking pretty cool. So we have our new buttons down here, which are looking pretty cool. And we have the slider, and as I drag it, the green part nicely resizes, and so does the gray part. Great. Now before we're done, I wanna show you one last handy thing you can do. So I showed you how you can create images the long way by doing it this. There's actually a shortcut in Xcode you can do called image literals. All you have to do is start typing the name of the image. So we called it slider thumb normal, and autocomplete will automatically find that in our asset catalog, and I can just select it right there, and look, it shows a little preview of the image right in code. And if you double click it, you can actually choose from different ones inside your asset catalog. Cool, so we can repeat this for all of the other images. And you can see here, it's kind of nice right in code to see what the image looks like, but you can use either way you want. They both work the exact same way. Notice here, it's giving me a problem. It says it cannot use optional chaining on non-optional value of type UI image, replace question mark with nothing. 
And so I'm gonna click fix. What that means is before when you added this syntax, the Swift compiler wasn't sure if there would actually be an image with whatever string name you happen to pass in there. But when you use image at, uh, literals like this, it knows for sure that there's acid in that catalog. So um, you don't need to put a question mark there. You'll learn more about optionals in later parts of this course.